Well, 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 welcome everybody to Lifeline Church. Come on, give it up for yourselves because you are amazing. You're God's chosen, you're God's people, and he is so glad you're here, and so am I. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Elliot. My wife Tiffany and I have the great privilege of pastoring this group of people called Lifeline Church. Come on, one more time. I'm excited for you. I really am. I really am. I believe that no matter how you ended up here today, no matter if you saw a billboard, saw our sign, saw us on Facebook, saw us on Instagram, all the different places, you can just stumble upon a church. I don't believe you stumbled anywhere. I believe God himself has been drawing you to be here, and you've been here a little while. You know I say this every single week because I believe it every single week. God, you, God has you here today, this Sunday, for a reason. God has you tuning in online today, today, for a reason. This maybe came up in your feed, and you just got here on accident. No accident at all. God has a message for you, a message of hope, encouragement, and love that he wants to speak into your life today. If you believe that with me, say amen. Amen activates our faith and says, yes, Lord, let it be done. So if you want that to be done, if you want that to, to be true in your life, I would encourage you just anytime you hear something that, that speaks to you, man, be conscious of the people next to you, but a little amen never hurt anybody. Can I get an amen? <laughs> that was a little, <laughs> I tricked you right there. I, I think I tricked you. Now, last week we talked about, uh, Tiffany talked about keeping our life aligned with our purpose. I thought that was a fantastic message. Come on, give it up for Pastor Tiffany. Amazing. Thank you so much for bringing that. Man, that was so good, protecting our calendar, protecting our time, and really staying focused on what, on what it is that God wants us to do in our lives, keeping our life aligned with our purpose. If you missed that, you can, you can check it out on, on the, our website, lifelinelodi.com. You can see our messages there. You can also check us out on YouTube or Facebook. We, we, are, we have no shortage of online places where you can find our stuff, all right? But we love it when you're here, too, by the way. Now, next week, I want to I bring you up to speed on something, because next week, we're starting a brand new series called It's Not You, It's Me. It's not you, it's me. Come on, raise your hand if you've ever heard that before. Try not to cry too much. It's not you, it's me. This is a relationship series that we're going to be doing for February. And it's all about how every single one of our relationships in life, any, any way we want to improve it, any way that, that we want to improve any relationship that we're living in, it's not you, it's me how we can focus on ourselves and really see an impact in every single relationship. Believe me, I have been getting ready for this for a long time. I have about seven books under my belt for this series alone. It is going to be packed with, with useful stuff. And bring your friends, honestly, because this is so applicable. This is so, even if they're not saved, it doesn't matter because everybody on the face of the planet wants their relationships to get better. You know what I'm talking about? So bring them. They're going to enjoy it. They may not even believe in God yet. Hey, we can handle that. We can, we can deal with that. But if you get them here, I, I, I promise you, I'm promising you right now that I, I will bring them messages that are going to work for them right away and will make their relationship better. And they might say, huh, this whole God thing seems to be working. <laughs> That's what we're going to do. So I want to invite you to, to bring your friends on down and, and really enjoy that series that is coming up called It's Not You, It's Me, because it's not you, it's me. Now, today is the last installment of this series called Uphill Habits. We learned that, and you can write this in your notes, uh, team, if you wouldn't turn on those uh, fan lights right there, I think it's button number four, so that you can write down in your notes a little bit, because I want you to take some notes today. We prepare those every single week, so that, because we know that note takers remember more about the messages. Now, if you're not a note taker, write this down. <laughs> write this down. If you are a note taker, write this down. But most people have uphill hopes and downhill habits. Uphill hopes and downhill habits. What does that mean? That means we all hope for great things in our life. Isn't that true? Yeah, it is. You want good things in your life. I know it's true. But do our habits correlate with our hopes? Do we do the small things every single day that add up to those big hopes that we have? Most people have uphill hopes and downhill habits. Hope is a great motivator. Hope is a good thing, okay? I don't want you to not have hope. I want you to have hope. Hope gets you started. 
Hope is a great motivator, not a great strategy. You know what is a great strategy? Habits. Habits. Getting, building some things into your life. If you can turn your hopes into habits, then we really got something going. Romans 12 says this. Fix your attention on God, and you'll be changed from the inside out. What's he saying? He's saying it, it's got to start from something from within. We don't just want to jump into the hope and be like, oh, there's my hope. <gasps> got it. No, 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 no. It starts in here. If you want to attain those things, it starts in here, and God's going to change you from the inside out. Most people look at successful people or, or anybody in your life that you want to emulate, anybody in your life that you look up to, and it's easy to look on social media, to look on the TV and say, oh, wow, look at what they did. Look at how they did. But what you don't see are the years of discipline. The years of saying no, and if, it's, and if it's physical health, it's years of saying no to ice cream. Come on, somebody, the fast is over today. Can I get an amen on that? Yeah. We've been in 21 days of, of prayer and fasting, and I, I just got to say, I'm ready for some round table, everybody. I'm just ready to go, ready to go. God says we're going to be changed from the inside out, readily recognize what he wants from you, and quickly respond to it. Man, we got to jump on those things. We got to jump on those things when God shows us. Unlike the culture around you, and there's a, there's a culture around you, and it's always dragging you down to its level of immaturity. God brings out the best of you, though, and develops well-formed maturity in you, and that's really what this series is all about, developing well-formed maturity in you. Since this is the last week, I thought I'd recap kind of what we talked about in case you missed it. But week number one was the, the first habit was this, focus on what I do first. Focus on what I do first. We talk about the first of our day. We talk about the first of our week. We talked about the first of our month, the first of our year. And we, we talked about how we want to put God first in every area. And that is the, f it's the first habit. <laughs> it's the first habit as well. Habit number two is controlling our thoughts controlling our thoughts. We learned that our thoughts aren't something that just happened to us. We think so. We think, oh man, my thoughts, I don't know why, they're just running wild, but did you realize what you've been looking at for the last week? Did you realize what you've been watching for the last week? What you've been speaking into? What people around you have been? Our thoughts actually come to us from a place that we don't always notice. And controlling our thoughts has to do with, with controlling what goes into our eyes and what goes into our ears. That's how we control our thoughts, is by, is by blocking those things that don't need to come in. And, and you can go back and take, take a listen to the uh, very serious things we wanted to get out. Habit number three was last week, keeping our life aligned with our purpose. And that was just last week, and Tiffany did a fantastic job bringing that. So let's talk about this last one, habit number four. I hope you're ready for it. It's called choose my relationships carefully. Choose my relationships carefully. You'll notice two things, that relationships are a choice, and we better be careful. Our relationships are a choice, and you better be careful. You are who you are today because of the people that have been in your life up to this point. That includes Jesus, too. He's a person. So in that way, we see that the, our choice of the people that we, we keep in our circle is of the utmost importance, good or bad. Some of those people were, were, are in your life by choice, and some of those people you inherited. Don't elbow anybody right now. That is not fair. That is not what I mean. That's not what I mean. You, you, we're just, we're kind of born into some people in our life too. And that's, uh, you know, what, what can I say on that? Anyways, the most important decisions you will ever make in your life are your relationship decisions. Now, I know Pastor Craig Rochelle said this, but I think somebody else said it. A hundred people said it. So I'm just going to say it again. You show me your friends, I'll show you your future. I'll, sh I'll show you your future. All, you got, all I got to do is see the people around you. If I can look at your circle, like your real circle, the people you're really spending time with, the people that you're really hearing from, the people that are really have voice in your life, I'll show you where you're headed, and you'll be able to see too. Just look at the fruit in their life. Look at what's been going on in their life. What kind of things have been going on in their life? You spend enough time with them, guess what? That's exactly what you're going to see too. Show me your friends. I'll show you your future. Have you ever heard the expression, uh, one bad apple spoils the whole bunch? Of course you have, of course. Li that's literally true for fruit, 
but it's also true for people. First Corinthians, this is not in your notes, I just put it in later. First Corinthians 15.33 uh, says, you can jot this down if you're a note taker, and if you're not a note taker, jot that down. First Corinthians 15.33, bad company corrupts good character. You put a bad apple in your bunch, all those good apples aren't going to make that rotten one better. Yeah, it is right there. No, 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 no. You got to, what, what else does the Bible say? Cast out the scoffer and the peace will come back to your life. It, one, one bad apple spoils the whole bunch. And let me tell you, one kind of person like that in your life that's, that's speaking that death, that is that subtle kind of downward spiral person. Let me just tell you, I'm not, this is not a, a message about you need to kick people out of your life. But sometimes... <laughs> Sometimes, though, sometimes where, where you can, where it's appropriate, I, mean, I hear a lot of people, and this, this happens in the dating world a lot. You know, see, I'm, I'm kind of young, and so I got a lot of young friends, and I got a lot of friends that are still dating, and, and I hear things like, oh, I'm going to fix him. Oh, oh okay. Oh, okay. You go, you going to fix him. All right. Yes, something going to get fixed. Okay. No. No. No, you're not going to fix him. You're not, you're not going to fix him. But, so, but something's going something's gonna to end up happening. That's for sure. Okay? I think this concept is often overlooked, but Solomon, who wrote Proverbs, is the son of David, uh, is the wisest man on the face of the planet, according to the Bible. He was given wisdom. He wrote the Proverbs of wisdom and said this in Proverbs 27, A mirror reflects a man's face, but what he is really like is shown by the kinds of Friends, he, say it with me, he chooses. We choose our friends. That is 100% your choice. And wh why is it that we're drawn to people sometimes that just are no good for us? Why? Why is it we feel bad for them or, or something is, maybe there's something in them that is just like, man, I, I just feel comfortable around them. Sometimes sin is very comfortable. Sometimes a bad lifestyle is very comfortable. A lot of my best friends that are best for me, I hate talking with them because they're always telling me things I don't want to hear. <laughs> but it's good for me. It really is. It's good for me. So I want us to jot down four verbs. Verbs are action words. Four verbs, four relationship choices that, that if you can do this, it'll change your life. Number one, nurture my important relationships. Number one, write this down, nurture my important relationships. I'm talking about the relationship like God, like like your spouse. These relationships are good or bad based on the nurture that you put in. Listen, marriage, if your marriage is not good, it's not the marriage's fault in and of itself. If the fire goes out in the fireplace, it's not the fire's fault. Yeah, I, you got to put a log on that thing. You've got to nurture that thing. The fire itself, it, oh man, that's a bad fire. It's just a bad fire. And so I hear people talk about their marriage like that. It's just, it's just we got a bad marriage. You just ain't putting any wood on it. Easy. I don't know what you guys are laughing about. Whew. Turn the heater off. Calm down, y'all. Calm down. You know what kind of church? Lifeline. Lifeline church. Come on. If the fire goes out in the fireplace, it's not the fire's fault. I just went to a couple friends of mine. I, we went to some friend's house um, a couple weeks ago. Um, pastor friends, they used to be our direct overseers. Now they're just friends. And they live in Mount Shasta. It was super cold. Beautiful. We loved it. We went to their house and they, you know, we just went over there. We're talking about our marriage. You know, they're older. And so they were just speaking life into us, telling us. We we're telling them about life and marriage and everything. They're just helping us out, but their house is so cold that they have a fireplace in there that basically warms the whole thing up. Central heat and air just cannot handle it. So the fireplace was a big deal, and we're sitting there, and they're they doing good in life. You know, they got easy chair here, easy chair here, and like every 10 minutes, if I, if he stood up, turned his back to me, and started stoking the fire. I'm like, hello, I'm sitting right here. Our, our important relationships are like that. You better turn around from everything else that's trying to distract you in your life. You better nurture that thing or else it's going to go out. And it's work. And it's always, it's constant. But let me tell you, it's, it's worth it. It's worth it, everybody. Now, let me translate that because I'm not telling you to light your spouse on fire. Okay? That's not, 
It's not what I mean. That's not what I'm talking about at all. Y'all are taking things real literal these days, so I'm going to spell it out for you. First Peter chapter 4. The end of all things is near. Therefore, be clear-minded and self-controlled so, so that you can pray. Above all, love each other deeply because love covers a multitude of sins. Being right in the argument is nice. It is. It's nice to be right, but it doesn't cover sin. Winning the argument is good, but doesn't cover sin. After all, God sent his son to convince people he was right. Right? No. Wait, that doesn't sound right. God sent his son that whoever believes in him will not perish but have eternal life. God did not send his son into the world to judge the world, but to set the world free. Ooh, ooh, it's a big deal, everybody. It's a big deal, everybody, because we want to be right, us Americans, ever since Tiffany's uh, missionary friend came to town and she, she was talking to us about our American culture versus uh, European cultures and, and uh, the different types of way that we relate. Uh, so Americans are very right and wrong people. We're black and white, right and wrong, but things are different in other parts of the world. It's not about right and wrong because if you steal a loaf of bread and it feeds your family, then you just did something honorable. It's called honor shame in different parts of the world, but in our part of the world, right here, let's talk about, about us. We love to be right. We are right. And those people over there on the other wing, they are wrong. That's why I choose not to play into all of that because it's love that covers a multitude of sins, not being right. It's love that covers a multitude of sins. If our goal really is to have an impact on people, then we better get focused in on this scripture right here that says love covers a multitude of sins. Love is a log on your fire. <laughs> Can I get an amen on that? Amen. amen. All right. Moving on. Number two, restore my broken relationships. Restore my broken relationships. Did you know that, that the Lord, Jesus, he, he told his disciples how to pray. It's called the Lord's Prayer. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. You, you know it probably. You didn't even grow up in church. You know it. But one-seventh of that whole outline was about forgiveness. Is about forgiveness. It's about not only forgiveness, it's about forgiving so that we can be forgiven. It's a big deal. Being forgiven is associated with forgiving others, and it says it in Colossians 3 as well. Bear with each other and forgive whatever grievances you may have. Forgive as the Lord has forgiven you. And that, that really hits home for me. Because when I don't want to forgive somebody, I need to remember the kinds of things that I was forgiven for. I've been forgiven for some, man, I, was, I didn't always have my shirt tucked in <laughs> with nice shoes on. My background, I, I've been forgiven of some, some things that no one would guess, okay? And so when I get tempted to, to bring the judgment or when someone has done me wrong, I want to, uh, but that never works. I've tried it. I've tried it. It just doesn't work. Forgiveness, forgiveness. I know it's hard. But the pain of forgiving people who have harmed you is dwarfed by the pain of living the rest of your life bitter, broken, and hurt due to unforgiveness. Amen. And we can't live that way. Man, we will be crippled as people wondering why I can't get any progress in life. I can't move past this pain. I can't get past these. It's because we haven't, we haven't yet learned to forgive, I believe. Amen. Now, when I... Um, when I was getting saved, and I was already saved a couple years, and um, I had a whole list. It's like 33 lines on a regular sheet of paper, and I had a whole list of people who had harmed me. Harmed me. I was going through a program at the time with 12 steps, and it was part of it. And I, I, it was part of it, and I just put them all down there. And these were all people who had done me wrong. And I went to my mentor, and I said, here's my list. You know, these people hurt me. They did me wrong. And these people, I'm, they did me wrong. This was not kidding around. These people hurt me badly. And my mentor turned around and said, all right, I need you to go down this list, and I need you to forgive every single one of them. I was, like, blindsided. It, like, it slapped me right in the face. It slapped me right in the face. And I've never forgotten that lesson, that these people who, who I did nothing to deserve that. I can't even tell you. It's just awful, awful. I didn't do anything, but I had to forgive them anyways. And as soon as I did, it was like, oh, I, I was weightless. I felt, and let me tell you, tell you this. It's an ongoing, that was years ago. That was probably close to 10 years ago. I still have to do that. 
And let me tell you, people didn't stop hurting me, and people don't stop hurting us. It, offense happens. We've got to learn to do a regular forgiveness, like every single day. Jesus told us how to pray. Forgive others as, this, as you will be forgiven. This is so key. It's so, I was blindsided by that, but I was healed from living a life of bitterness towards those who never said sorry to me. And some of them have passed away. They never will say sorry to me, ever. I don't need sorry. I, I need to not need sorry. I need to live in a place of forgiveness. Number three, sever any harmful relationships. Not your husband or your wife, okay? Some of you are going to walk, oh, Elias said... I need to sever that. No, 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 no. Pause right there. Not, not your husband, not your wife. Um, but I'm talking about some relationships that you know don't need to be there. They're, I'm talking about relationships that you have allowed into your life that you know are not good for you. Now, I heard this story, and it's too weird to be true. Well, I'm going to tell you anyway, because it's, apparently it's true, but don't, you know, don't take me to court over it. It's a story of a husband and wife who were both on social media, living out of their inboxes. You know what I'm talking about? They were flirting with other people on social media, and they were both. They were, they were, the guy was flirting with another girl, and the girl was flirting with another guy on social media. And at the same time, at the same time, these two, the husband and wife, both arranged meetings with the people that they were, they were flirting with. And it was each other. Can you believe it was each other? They were like doing the alias thing, and I can't, I can't believe it. I can't believe it. But this is how the story goes. They got mad at each other and divorced. Okay. I know, I know. I'm like, that can't be real, can it? But let me just tell you this. I, well, I know one thing is, is real. Man, this, this world that we're living in is a landmine. It's a landmine of opportunities to be in relationships we're not supposed to be in and engaging in our heart with things that we're not supposed to, to be doing. Let me just tell you outright, any kind of adultery, any kind of cheating, any kind of social media, flirtatious, even cohabitation be before, you know, that marriage covenant has been made, call it off today. Call it off today. Those relationships, they might feel good in the moment, but they are killing you. They are killing you. It's not God's best for you. And let me just tell you, if, if, we, can, if we can endure the pain, because it's going to be painful to sever some of those relationships. But let me tell you, that, that pain of living there with that dull pain the rest of your life of knowing you're not in the place where God wants you to be. But if you can sever those relationships today, you're, you're going to be saved from harm. Literally saved from harm. Proverbs 13, 20 says, he who walks with the wise grows wise, but a companion of fools suffers harm. I don't want you to suffer, okay? I only got like 45 minutes with you. I need to share some stuff that's going to maybe save your life, and I only got so much time. A companion of fools suffers harm. Get out of that inbox. Block that person. We have the technology. Block it. Delete it. I talked about this a little bit a couple weeks ago. Put accountability on all your devices. I live with accountability on my devices. Why? Someone saying, well, you're a pastor. You ought to be above that. I'm a human being just like everybody else. But I'm doing one thing different. I'm, I'm, I'm building a wall between me and that stuff. I don't even need to be close to that kind of stuff. Because I'm strong most of the time. But when, when, when it's the really bad day, oh, and, it's, and I'm tired, and it's been a hard, lots of hard meetings... I don't need in a moment of weakness to have that even available to me. I would encourage all of you men, women too, ladies too, excuse me. I'm so sorry. You ladies are going, yeah, us too. Because why? Because we all deal with this. We all deal with this. And we don't need to be living that way. Let's, let's rise up as a church. Let's rise up as God people and say, you know what? No, I'm not going to engage in relationships like that. I'm not going to go outside of God's plan. I'm going to stay right in step. And God is going to bless. He's going to bless that. He's going to bless that commitment to want to do things his way. I'm not trying to harp on anybody today who might have struggled with this in the past or is maybe dealing with it right now. I, come on. You, you don't know the things I've done. All right, I'm just, I'm just sharing with you. This could save your life. This could save the life of your family. It could, it could change everything if we can learn to sever those harmful relationships. I always like to say we preach messages that you can apply to your real daily life, like messages for Mondays, right? 
That's the kind of message we want to bring, messages for Mondays that actually work during your real life. But don't wait until Monday on this one. Do it today. If, if you are having anything like that in your life, do it today. Don't waste any moment. Sever those harmful relationships. Number four, initiate some meaningful relationships. Up until this point, it's been a kind of a bummer. <laughs> We've been going with some hard stuff. This one starts to get fun, okay? I want you to initiate some meaningful relationships in your life. This one is about creating new relationships, and we all want mentors, coaches, and people that we can look up to in our life, but most people are not in the habit of creating relationships like that. Now, I, I feel like this is one thing God has graced me with. If there's one area of my life where I know God has helped me to do well, that is, is bringing mentors and coaches into my life. And when I see them and I see there's good fruit in their life and they have things that I want to accomplish in my life, I will, whoop, I will invite them in and I will let them speak to my life. I have probably a dozen men. There's five that I speak with on a weekly basis, but there's way more than that that I can speak to in different areas of life. Some for marriage, some for ministry, some for preaching, some for friendship, some for ministry-related stuff. This is like one of the best habits you could, because it'll help all the others. If you have the right people, like who is speaking into, who has permission to speak into your life right now? Who has healthy fruit in their life? Who has who has the things going on that you want to see in your life, who in your life right now? And I would say, if you can't think of somebody right off the top of your head that has permission to tell you you're wrong and you ought to do it this way and you have that kind of relationship to say, all right, let's do it, this is what we want. This is what we want to accomplish. Every single man, woman, and child needs that in their life. Hebrews 10, 25, let us not give up meeting together as some people are in the habit of not doing that. We're in the habit of not doing this, really. It's like, we hate people telling us what to do. We hate it. Come on, let's not lie to each other, all right? This is a place of truth. We hate it. It's awful. Please stop telling me all the stuff I'm doing wrong or what I should be doing. But let me just tell you, this is, this is God's plan for us, that we should be in the habit of being together. Let us encourage one another. All the day is the, as you see the day approaching. Don't think that's for somebody else. No, it's not for somebody else, especially us guys. So, I can do it myself. No, no, you can't do it yourself. No, you should not do it yourself. I'm just going to go to work, come home, and I'm just going to get murdered. No, quit it. Stop it with all that. Man, we need people in our life that you could call at any time and say, hey, I'm struggling with this, or I need help with this, or what do you think about this, so that we can grow and move forward. That's not for somebody else. It's for all of us. And that's what we're going to spend the rest of our time talking about. Four relationships you need to get in the habit of developing. You ready for this? I got four of them. Here we go. Mastering the habit. Mastering this habit. Number one, develop my relationship with my church. Number one is develop. And I said that on part, my church. Because that's how we ought to say this. My church. This is my church. Say it with me. My church. My church. Hey, a lot of you said that. I thought it was going to be like a meow, but it was actually pretty good. You guys did really well. Everyone needs a place that's called my church. And the Bible, by the way, just assumes that you're going to do this. The Bible kind of doesn't even say, hey, you should do this. It just assumes you will because it has like 30 verses that, are, that can only be applied in a local church setting. So the Bible basically assumes that you're going to do this. Listen to Ephesians 2. You are members of God's very own fam members. Like you belong there. This is your church, and you belong in God's household with every other Christian, not attenders, members. And if you're attending today, let me just tell you, that's fine. This is not often language I, I use. I mean, because I, I know. I know what's going on. Like, it's, it's a, I, I like this church. I really do. I would go to this church if I wasn't the pastor. I would come here. I, I love it. <laughs> I don't know why that's funny. <laughs> I'm glad you enjoyed that little thing, statement right there. I like it, and I know some people come, you know, and it's, you're just kicking the tires or whatever. You're, like, trying it out, and that's, that's fine. That's fine, but let me just tell you something else. Um, you know, we're doing some big things. We want to go some places. We, we have some big things we want to accomplish. And what we don't need is a church full of attenders. Now, you can, you can, you can attend as long as you want, honestly. You don't need to contribute ever. Like, the tither's got you. Just enjoy it. Oh, 
You, could, you can do that. You totally can because I believe God will begin to, to show you that maybe you do need to belong here, but you don't need to serve. You don't need to get You can visit. You can do that. But I, I want to qualify that by saying, man, there's, there's some things that, you, that you're going to be missing out on until you say, my church. When you say, my church, you don't need to stomp your foot or anything, but when it's down here, like, no, this is my church. I belong here. These are my people. When we get there in that place, because commitment always builds character. Commitment builds character. If there's no commitment, when it gets hard, we leave. <laughs> Tiff and I had a, a tender kind of relationship. It's called dating. <laughs> we were attenders with each other. I would pick her up on the weekend. A lot like that. We would meet each other on the weekend, and we would go out and have some fun. I'd drop her back off. Man, we were, we were just visiting each other. But then we, had a, we became members. <laughs> And let me tell you, membership comes with benefits. Um, let me just tell you that right now. Membership comes with its perks. And we, we had a wedding and got married. And Tiffany's a heck of blushing right now. None of you can see that. That's fine. That's fine. But membership comes with its privileges. But it also has responsibilities. It also has responsibilities. Relationships are better when we commit. But I, wanna, I, wanna rem- I just want to encourage you. If, 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 you've been, if you're done kicking the tires and maybe you went through something, you need to really like take a break and, and go through something, man, do that. Do whatever you need to do. But once you're ready, I would encourage you to make this your church. Like that, those are your chairs. Those aren't like the church. Those are your chairs. Those are your drums. This is your microphone. If it doesn't work, that's your problem because this is my church. That, that, that garbage is on my floor. I'm not going to leave that there. That's my gar- That's garbage that's on my floor. That's my coffee. Th- these people, these are guests in my house. I would encourage you to, to come alongside because we have, we have big vision. Vision we can't even really talk all the way about because it's just, it's crazy. We'll just take one step at a time, all right? But we've got future vision. Dream, big dreams. We need people who are bought in. We need people who are, are, are ready to come in and say, you know what, I'm, I'm coming with you. Let's go. Let's do this together. Let's go together. We do membership through our growth track. Our growth track happens after church every single Sunday. Once you're ready for that, just just jump on in. It's it's just that simple. Number two, develop my relationship with godly friends. Godly friends. Being around them makes you more godly. It's a New Testament church in action. Okay, Acts 2, 44 says this. All the believers met together constantly and shared everything everything with each other. I was just sharing about this earlier. The sh- what do we share? We, we share the real us. We share the real us because we're all wearing masks right now. Did you know that? Every single one of us. Every single one. I am too. Man, there's things about me you don't know and y'all you ain't go find out because, you know, I'm here to encourage you. I don't need to share every time I'm discouraged with you because I came here today to encourage you. But let me just tell you, if I don't have any place, then I'm in trouble. Now, I'm not saying you need to come into church, be like, blah, blah, telling everybody everything. That is not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is we all need a safe place where we can go, this is what I'm really going through. This is what I really need to talk about. This is what I really need prayer for. Where we, a place where we can take the mask off. A place where we can take the mask off. Life groups are the place where we do that. We do that in what we call life groups. They meet all throughout the week. They meet all over the place in Lockford, Lodi, Stockton, all different kinds of places. Uh, why don't you go ahead and put that slide up. The way, to, the way to sign up for one of our groups is to download our app just right there. And you can actually see all the groups. You can take out your phone and download it right now. And you can look at all the groups. We're in the middle of a quarter right now that, that groups meet in. But you can jump in. There are men's groups that are open right now, women's groups that are open right now. There's different groups that you can go to because we need a place. We need a place where we can get real and develop a relationship with godly friends. The way our groups work is, is we have four quarters every year, three months, and we're on for two and off for one, you know, so the group leader can, can take a little break. And we can even start new groups. During the summer, we'll do a bunch of fun outdoor Frisbee golf groups or different kinds. And during this, this kind of weather, they're mostly Bible studies, you know, because we're trying to stay inside. But whatever you do, get together. Whatever you do, get together. You will never have all this church has to offer until you get involved in one of our life groups. Man, I would just encourage you 
to do that. Because access to information doesn't change people's lives. <gasps> Some of you are like, yes, it does. <laughs> well, it helps. But let, let me put it to you this way. We live in the information era. You can ask your phone literally, okay, Google. Oh, I didn't hear it. My phone goes, boop, and I can ask my phone any question, and it'll just answer it. I have access to over a 1,000 Bible studies that I can go through right on my cell phone. We all do. Well, if we live in, the, if, if information was the end-all, be-all, then how come we're all, not all living healthy, happy lives? It's because relationships are suffering, and people aren't getting together like we should. Information doesn't solve the problem. Relationship. Life change happens in relationships. Man, all the, we do uh, financial groups and people go there because they want financial help. We do um, Bible studies and people go because they like the content title or they go, it's all a hook so that you can meet the people in your group. Because if you come out of that group with friends, that is a thousand times better than any information you could ever know. If you come out of there with friends that know you, that love you, that you can call in the middle of the night, you won. <laughs> you are winning. We need to develop our relationships with godly people. Go ahead and download that app whenever you get the chance and join a group. Number three is this. Develop my relationship with a team. With a team. Right now we have on our dream team uh, over 80 people. I think it's 88 right now. People serving on teams. It's incredible. It's like we've got a church that really embraced this whole teamwork mentality. And I was being harsh on people with ownership. And, but you guys are doing a great job. A really great job. And it's fun. It's fun to serve God alongside the people you love. Man, it's a joy. Now, let me just tell you, from the Bible, you will never do anything as significant in your life alone. At least that's what the Bible says. Listen to Ecclesiastes 4. It says, there was a man all alone. He had neither son nor brother. There was no end to his toil. Yet his eyes were not content with his wealth. Two are better than one because they have a good return for their labor. We have got to learn this principle of getting on a team and serving God with the people we love. This is not talking about, this scripture is not talking about being married. It's talking about serving. It's talking about work. It's talking about showing up and saying, all right, let's get these, let's, let's do this. And at this church, we celebrate wins. All right, you, when you get on the team, you'll find out every pre-service rally, every pre-service huddle in the teams, a win is being recited. Hey, guys, this morning it was this. Hey, guys, seven people gave their life to Jesus last week. Seven people gave their life to Jesus last week. Seven people gave their life to Jesus last week. And guess what? That's because of what you brought to the table. You, Dream Team. I just want to, can we just celebrate our Dream Team right now? Come on, let's give it up for the Dream Team. Who are, who are giving their best every single week. I want to always remind you, you are making a difference. You really are. And I would encourage, you know, everyone, everyone to be, to be involved and to go through our growth track. There's like a dozen teams to join. Lifeline is working fine without you. <laughs> I got that in my notes. It's like, why would I say that? Lifeline is working fine without you, but it would work a lot better with you. Because you have gifts and talents that you can bring to the table that will be missing until you do. And, and it's a joy. It's a privilege. Last one is this. Number four, develop my relationship with God. Develop my relationship with God. Tiff and I are going on eight years. Well, it's in between seven and eight years of lead pastoring and many more years uh, being in some kind of leadership role in the church. And so we've been We've been leading different groups, leading different teams, and leading the whole church for, for many years now. And let me just tell you one thing we've learned. There's a big difference between people who try God and people who commit to God. It's, it's prevalent. Some people want to try God out. You know, we're like, well, I'm going to give it a try. You know, you can test the Lord in, in some things. Well, the Bible only says one thing. But there is something significant that happens when we, when we go all in, as we say. That's how we say it around here. We, we go all in. It's like someone saying, I I'm going to try to be in the NFL. No, you ain't. <laughs> you ain't Man, you better either commit and give your life to that or just don't waste your time. 
The Oakland Raiders have the most fanatical fans of any sports team that I know of. And if you're watching online from somewhere else, come on, Raiders. Oh, come on, Bay Area people, man. They get dressed up like pirates, basically. Like pirates, basically. And they, they park far away. They tap into their life savings to get season passes to go over here. And they do all the things that the book of Psalms says to do when we're worshiping. Clap our hands, shout for joy, jump up and down, give the Lord a praise, man. Raiders fans, they get it. They get it. But the Raiders don't even know their names. Yeah, we come to worship a God who, who doesn't just know our name. He knows every hair on your head. He thought you up before you were even born. He knows every struggle and trial you're going through, and he knows what the potential outcome could be if you would just commit to him. Commit to him. Man, I'm, not, I'm not trying to raise up a church of fanaticals, but definitely fans. Man, let's be, let's be fans of God. Let's... Don't, don't let us be beat by some Raider fans, all right? I know it's a, I'm serious, though. I'm serious. We were talking about this just this last week. We got people that are in the, in the stadium, you know, and it's weird not to shout. It's weird not to jump and be like, yes, seven points. And it's like, yes, seven salvations. See what I'm saying? Team God, let's go. Let's commit to him. Man, good things are waiting on the other side. If we would just take the step, take the step, go all in. I'm telling you from experience that when you go all in with God, he goes all in with you. Jeremiah 29, 13, if you look for me wholeheartedly, wholeheartedly, not just like when I'm looking for my keys, Honey, I didn't find them. Where are they? <laughs> no, when, I, when you look for him wholeheartedly, you'll find him. Give your all to him. Don't just try, God. Do this. Give him, give him a year. Give him, give, him the, give him the year of your life and do everything. Go all in. Do all the groups. Contribute. Come to church every single week. Ju read your Bible every day. Do all the things. Do all four of these habits we were talking about this month. And you stand before me one year from now and tell me he did not show up. And he did not do an amazing thing. You know, I promise you he will. I, I promise you he will. Give him 2020. I say, all right, God, let's do this. You know, I, nothing I'm holding on to. Here are my keys. Here's my wallet. Here's my shirt off my back. What do you want me to do, God? I'm all in. I'm all in. And that's where we need to come to. That's the place I want us to be, where we're saying, I'm, I'm all in for you, God. I'm all in. Give us one year. All the groups you can. Serve on a team. Come every week. Do all of these habits. Put God first in every area. Control your thoughts. Control the intake. Keep your life aligned with your purpose. Choose these relationships carefully. And I can only promise th these things because God himself says, if you look for me wholeheartedly, you'll find me. Let's bow our heads and close our eyes. Father, we come before you today grateful and thankful that you are going to show up in this place. I ask for open hearts and open minds. And I want to give every person in this place and even people listening online, there's an opportunity right now that God hasn't been at the top of your list Maybe he's not even on your list at all. Or maybe he was, but he went down a little bit. He went down and, and he just got snuck down to fifth place, sixth place, seventh place, and some other things got involved. And God, that's not, that's not what we want. That's never what we wanted, but somewhere along the way it happened. So I just pray right now for these two groups of people. Number one. He's not on your list at all. You've never even done this. You've never even tried this. You've never even said to God, all right, God, I'm here. I'm all in. Let's go. Let's do this. I want to pray to the second, I want to ask the second group of people 
that if he's gone down on your list in any way, shape, or form, this is your opportunity to put him back where he belongs at the top of your list. If that's you today and you want to give God all authority and believe in his son Jesus as your savior, I want you to just lift your hand right now. Go ahead. Just lift your hand right now and say, God, I'm all in. Amen. God sees you and you and you and you and you. Amen. God sees your hands and you and you and you. Yes, he sees you, and he is going to show up in your life, and that is a guarantee, a promise. He is going to show up. So church, let's pray together. Let's, let's have one unified voice of prayer. Nobody praying alone. Let's all say it. Father God, I give my life to you. Thank you for sending your son, Jesus, to die on a cross for my sins. I give it all to you. Fill me with your spirit and make me new. Show me the way to go, and I will go. Pick me up when I fall. Be my strength. In Jesus' name, amen. Come on, can we celebrate for everybody who made that decision today?